today. My name is Senior Pastora Dr. Diana Bravon of Jesus is Lord Fellowship Worldwide International. Amen. Let us pray today before we get started. Let us also, uh, let us pray today. Let us remember to pray today for every prayer need that we hold deep within us, of every personal need that's within us. Let us pray for, for every health need. Amen. Every prayer for health, for strength, for healing, for wisdom. Let us pray for everyone's households. Let us pray for everybody's marriage. Let us pray for all of our grown-up children, our grown-up grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, and, and so forth on. Amen. Let us also pray for, for those who are seeking employment. Let us pray for those who also just passed a, a, an exam. Amen. And that they are about to get a, a great position in their life. Amen. Way better than they have ever prospered before. Let us pray for those who are on Social Security. Let us pray for those who have any kind of fixed income for the Holy Spirit to supply their needs according to the, to, to the riches through Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us praise God that the Lord will always supply their needs and always be with them. Let us pray that they will have sufficient faith within them that the Lord will always be there in the morrow. Amen. And before them. And that and the Lord will be there and supply every need for each and every purpose. Amen. Let us also pray for the needs of every local church. Amen. For today is midweek service. So let us pray for every minister worldwide, whoever is spreading the gospel. Amen. Let us also pray for the needs of every church especially the needs of Jesus as Lord Fellowship Worldwide International Amen. Let us ask our Father God for provisions so that his church may be able to continue to work that he has set aside for it. Let us pray for those that has been called into leadership in his church, that they may have the strength and the godly vision. Amen. At all times, not part times, but at all times. Because let me tell you something, whether you're a leader worldwide or whether you're a leader in one church building, you still face trials, you still face uh, temptations and tribulations. Why? Because you are there doing the Lord's work constantly. You are there anointing and praying for those who seeks the Lord. Amen. Amen. And, and various has different gifts from the Lord. So you're working in leadership in different levels. A different level always has a different devil. Amen. So let us pray for each and every leadership and their home. Let us pray for every open door. Amen. Let us also pray for all of their families. All the families of every leadership. Amen. Let us also place a hedge of protection wrapped around every leader and their family. So that they may be healed also from every health issue that 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 comes along their ways let us pray as we listen to our hearts today and our inner soul man program that will be open to the living word so that we may feed freely on the message and we will drink from the power of the holy spirit amen we welcome today all of the national and all of the international fellowship members and visitors around the globe as you receive the spiritual nutrition of the Lord's word. May the Lord richly bless you today around the globe. I am Senior Pastora Dr. Diana Brevon of Jesus is Lord Fellowship, Worldwide International. Let us prepare ourselves today and let us open up our Bibles to Psalms 42 verses 1 to 11. And those of you who has printed out the script to follow along, please follow along. Please highlight in your Bibles. Get your pens, your highlighters. Please highlight in your Bibles the scriptures. Amen. Uh, it is very imperative with me that you do so. Amen. I am very, I am very, very strict when it comes to the living word. Amen. I'm very, very firm, not strict. I'm very, very firm when it comes to the living word of God and for you to be fed the right way. Amen. So open up your Bibles to Psalms 42 verses 1 to 11. Hope for the downcast. 
This is a part of the sermon series that we started Sunday. Today is part two, and today is the last day for, for a hope for the downcast soul. Amen. We do these particular things to get a diagnosis so we can treat you so you will get better all the way through all the way through psalms 42 folks and the first verse of psalms 43 there are reasons that we see into this diagnosis here or the cause of the downcast soul folks if if you're not going to understand a part of the beginning of this sermon please I, I advise you to go back and listen to some, to to this sermon from Sunday. Amen. And also get the script from Sunday and follow that along and study it. Amen. Psalms chapter 42 verses 1 to 2. Your pastora is reading from the King James Version. To the chief musician for the sons of Korah, as the heart panted, after the water brooks so panteth my soul after thee O god my soul thirsteth for god for the living god when shall i come and appear before god many scholars they feel like this was david describing his time of fleeing from from jerusalem as he ran from absalom amen why the despair why because he has been separated from the house of the Lord. He had been forced to flee from Jerusalem, where he regularly worshipped. He, he can no longer lead in the worship as he had in times past. Amen? He'll have to remind himself to hope for God. Amen, folks? There's times that you have to remind yourself to worship amen because david had been forced to leave he literally felt himself to be cut off from the lord our god his greatest question is when can i go and when can i meet the lord our god one of the causes of a downcast soul folks is an absence from the house of god whether many are willing to admit it or not we find great bolstering in our souls when we come to the house of God routinely regularly and actively folks and actively in Luke chapter 10 we find the parable of the Good Samaritan who brought the wounded man to the inn the inn can be pictured as the house of God the inn was a place of refreshment for weary travelers. The house of God, it brings release, relief to us in this valley of tears. The inn had an owner who attended the beaten man. The house of God has pastors, faithful ministers, godly saints who receives weary sinners to help them recover from the injuries of the world and of the devil. The inn had a grand table of food in it. Amen. The house of God, it brings us the sincere milk of the word and the strong meat of the word of God. The inn was a desirable place for lodgers. The house of God is a place that the saints long to go to. And find rest for their souls. Amen. Our soul here. Can very quickly become down past. When we don't even regularly attend the house of worship. Amen. And I am also addressing Jesus as Lord Fellowship Worldwide International. Worldwide Online. I'm also addressing that. Amen. And other ministries, amen, worldwide online where you could come to receive the living word. The psalmist is far, very far from home. And therefore, he feels very far from God. And any time that we feel that distance from the Lord our God, our soul can become 
downcast, folks. Our soul can become downcast. The mouth of the ungodly in chapter 42, verses 3 and verse 10. Psalms chapter 42, verse 3. My tears have been my meat day and night while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? Psalms 42, verse 10 states, As with a sword in my bones, mine enemies reproach me while they say daily unto me, Where is thy God? The catcalls of the ungodly folks, the backsliders, and those who hate everything about righteousness stands for. They can be get right under your skin. Amen. Especially with their ungodly words. Amen. They can really get under your skin. But obviously, it had some effects as the psalmist because it's mentioned twice here. Where is thy God? Amen. Where is thy God? In verse 3 and in verse 10. You have probably heard it before. Where is your God when you need him? Where is your God now? Why hasn't your God given you a fair shake in life? It's only... When we entertain the questions of the ungodly, that we feel that our souls are slipping down. And I mean it, folks. That's the only time when we entertain the questions of all of the ungodly souls that are not within the word of God, who does not know Jesus Christ, that we feel our souls just slipping down into the gorge of the downcast. Amen. Where is God indeed? Where is God in this far country? Where is God when my enemies taunt me? Does God even hear my cries? When is God going to change all of my circumstances that I'm facing? It reached, amen, it just reached the point. Where the psalmist here in this chapter couldn't even eat what he said. Amen. He couldn't even eat what he said. Amen, folks. Amen. Amen. Through the grace of God. He, 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 couldn't, he couldn't even eat what he said. My tears have been my meat day and night. My appetite had been snatched from me, so I don't even desire to eat anything. That's what the catcalls of the ungodly can do to you. That's what the catcalls of the ungodly can do to you. It can begin to harbor doubts within your soul about everything that you have even held in, in truth. Amen. But remember folks. That David was at that point. Before we ever even. Came along in life. Never forget that there's a brotherhood before us. In the gates of heaven. Who have endured. And who have made it to the end. Amen folks. We shall do the same thing just as David did. Just as every brother and sister of the word of God did. We can become downcast when we miss the house of God. And when the mouth of the ungodly overwhelms our faith and our trust in God. Amen. Memories of the past. Go into verse 4 right now in chapter 42. When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. For I had gone with the multitude. I had went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise with the multitude that kept holy days. He also 
became downcast with the memories of past revivals, past victories, past accomplishments that came to his mind. This is the trap of the aging. The psalmist tells us how he used to be with the great multitude that went to worship the shouts of joy, the wealth of thanksgiving and leading to worship. Pleasant memories of the past, it became a source of discouragement for the present, folks. There's a memory of the past acts of God and how that it seemed better somewhere back then. The human tendencies, folks, is to glamorize the past and make it seem better than it really was. But the reality here is that every step of this life, it has its own battles. It has its own trials and testings, which brings both victories and it brings us both losses. And our tendency, folks, is to remember the victories and forget about all of the losses. That's the tendencies here. There has always been a fight for holiness. There's always been a battle for doctrine. There has always been tares among the wheat. Amen? There's always been the wolves among the sheep. Amen, folks? There was a Judas alongside the John. Hallelujah. I've had a tendency to forget that there were battles in the past. Just like there's present struggles. Don't waste the afflictions, folks, that you're enduring right now. Just don't waste any of those afflictions that you're enduring right now. Let the spiritual pressure that you feel right now be something that causes you to dig even deeper, 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 deeper into the kingdom of God. Amen. The trials of life, folks. Let's go to verse 7 from here. Amen. Let's go into verse 7. Psalms 42, verse 7. Deep calleth unto deep at the noise of thy water spouts. All the waves and thy billows are gone over me. The psalmist goes on to further note the fact that there are times that trial sweeps us away like the great waves and breakers of the deep. Amen. David's saying here that the conflicts with Absalom had been the greatest trials of his life. It has swept him away from Jerusalem, folks. Just like the waves being smitten by a hurricane. Amen. At another time, the ocean might have been a calm and relaxing scene for him. But instead, he can see no beauty in it. But there's an acknowledgement here of something. Here that you'll miss at just a glance. Amen. The psalmist describes the forces of the sea at work here. It was nothing that they could even be unfamiliar about with because they were on the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. How awesome was that? Amen. And there were no storms that came to the Sea of Galilee. There was no storms that came. Here's what we missed sometimes with this scripture. Amen. Let me elaborate this with you right now. Amen. Here is what we miss sometimes with this scripture. God is in charge of the waves of the sea. And even if there's grudgingly acknowledgments, there's some trials in our lives that God ordains them to come to our way. Amen. How can we see? That there are things that he wants to work out or to draw out and allow us to walk through 
so that we can really know what it's really like to be molded into the ardent disciple. Amen? Amen, folks? Matthew chapter 20, verse 23. Please mark this down and please highlight this in your word as you're following along and, uh, and writing down your notes. Matthew chapter 20, verse 3, 23. If you drink of his cup, you're going to be baptized with the baptism of the Lord. Is baptized with. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 1 verse 5. Sufferings of Christ abounds in us. So does the consolation of Christ abound in us. Amen. Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. But yet not I, but Christ who lives within me. Philippians chapter 3 verse 10. Fellowship of suffering. Romans chapter 8 verse 17. If we suffer with him, we will be glorified with him. Romans chapter 8, verse 29. Being conformed into the image of the Son. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 11 to 12. If we are dead with him, we shall live with him. If we suffer with him, we will reign with him. Amen. If we suffer, we will reign with him. Amen. 1 Peter Chapter 4, verse 13. Partakers of Christ. Sufferings. We will be glad with exceeding joy. Amen, folks? Our trials are often the very tipping points, folks, that are present in our lives. In the years to come, once that we look back with the wisdom of maturity, as the Lord keeps on raising us up into brand new levels, we can say, that thing was good for me. That thing was very good for me. Oh, hallelujah. But when you're in the midst, folks, of the trials, even though it may be God-ordained, your soul can become downcast. To feel forgotten by God, Amen. That is 42, verse 9. Psalms chapter 42, verse 9. I will say unto you, God, my rock, why hast thou forsaken me, forgotten me? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Let me read this one more time. I will say unto God, my rock, why hast thou forgotten me? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Closely, folks, related to the fact that God will let us walk through the challenges of a, of a trial. There's another connection here that we take, that we have to make to God that comes from Psalms 42 verse 9. It's the painful cries to God that he has forgotten us. Look no further than the cross, folks. And you'll find Jesus crying out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? That is Matthew chapter 27, verse 46. A downcast soul, folks, it can really find himself downcast. When he thinks that God has forsaken him. There's nothing like being lost at the end of the dead end. Amen. There are times that those who are, feels a great devotion to God. Will find great condemnation. When they even question God. But the word of the Lord is the greatest place to go. When you get in this state of mind. Why? Because Recorded on the pages of the word, there are others who felt the same way. And God decided to put it in his work, 
Amen. God decided to put it right within the pages of this book, which is his words from his lips. Amen. That that is harvested within our soul man program, within our hearts as we move it to receive to have it. Amen. Psalms 13 verse 1 speaks. How long will you forget me, Lord? Forever? Psalms 22, verse 2. My God, I cry in the daytime, but you're not there. I cry at night, but I cannot find you. Psalms 44, verse 23 states, Awake from your sleep, God, and please hear me out. Psalms 44 verse 24 states, Why are you hiding your face, O God? Why are you forgetting about all of my afflictions and my oppressions that I face, O God? Psalms 77 verse 9 states, Here, you've forgotten to be gracious to me. God, have you closed off your mercies from me? Isaiah chapter 40 verse 27. My way is hid from the Lord. My knowledge of him has passed from my mind. All of these things pours out of the downcast soul. But I can say to you without a doubt that God knows exactly where we walk and the direction that we take. Amen, folks. Amen and amen. The cure of the downcast soul, folks. Those are the reasons for a soul that has become so downcast. But just as these are reasons that we get downcast, the word can point out some things that will help cure of this. The word of God. Why am I so firm with the word every day? Why does my team make sure that the word of God and all of my daily devotions are, are posted for you every day? And the weekly sermons. Amen. Why? Amen. Psalms 42 verses 5 and 11. Put your hope back in God. Put your hope back in in God. Folks, twice in the psalm, we see the phrase, hope thou in God, verse 5 and 11. Amen? The man who learns, the man who learns that, that he must not give into depression of the soul is a man who has learned one of the, the greatest lessons of life. He'll not let himself give it in to it because being downcast or, or filled with self-pity. Instead, he gets a grip on himself and he starts to wrestle through it. He reminds himself that there are things that, that he can put hope in. We're constantly talking to ourselves. Amen? In fact, no one talks to you more than you. Amen? More times than not, you have to talk to yourself, preach to yourself, question yourself. Why art thou cast down, my soul? What business do you have being in this condition? This is what Paul was, was getting at when he noted in Romans 6 that you have to kill your flesh. Amen? You have to turn on yourself. You need to upbraid yourself, condemn yourself. You need to exhort yourself and say to yourself, hope thou in God. Hope thou in God. Hope thou in God. Instead of muttering around in, in this unhappy, instead of in this depressed, instead of this angered way of life, Amen. There's a spirit of faith 
and a spirit of dejection and our faith has to get the upper hand. Amen. He reminds himself of his responsibility. Amen. And in, in Psalms 42, 5 and also verse 11. And that same connection with the hope verses in 5 and, and verse 11. The psalmist knows his responsibility is to put his hope in God. Nothing more and nothing less. This world is passing, folks. It is fleeting, folks. And it goes by so quickly that it's astounding. And if you're putting your hope in the passing fancies of this world and more inside the world and instead of inside the word of God, you're already in trouble. You are already in trouble. If I ask you, what did the Lord speak to you about today in a message or in the in a word or in a devotion that the Lord has given you today? What would you tell me? Would you go, ooh, ooh, ah, 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 through the grace of God? Or would you share with me what you got out of a message today? Amen? What did you get out of Dr. Deanna Brevon's daily devotions? What did you get out of any other teachings that I, that, 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 that I administer to you with? What did you get out of, of our, our prayer coordinator's Rosemary's devotions? What did you get out of the daily Bible reads that we post every day? What did you get out of this week's Bible studies where you are? What did you get out of it? If I ask you these questions, what answers will you give me? Amen? Are you focusing on Jesus? That's the only way I know that you're focusing on Jesus Christ. That's the only way I know that you're inside the word of God. Because I hear Christ Jesus through you. Through your writings, through your voice, through the way you call and leave your prayer messages. Amen. And, and whatever else you're facing throughout that, the prayer message line. Amen. Amen and amen. The psalmist here, he has the sense of responsibility. To know that he must do what he has to be done. And that is put his hope in the Lord our God. Praise is what gets you through, folks. That's, that is what Psalms 42 verses 5 and verse 11 is all about, folks. That's what it's all about. Amen. Look once more at, at, at those two verses. I want you to go back and I want you to look one more time at these two verses. Because he notes that I will praise him. Certainly came to his life when he began to understand that God had not changed one bit. Amen. God has not changed. His purpose for me has not changed. He has led me to the uplifting victories in the past, he will do it again, folks. Let your faith arise to the better things that are in the future, folks. A host of men in the Bible have proven this to be true. Amen? Who's the host of men who has proven this to be true? It is Joseph, Moses, Joshua, David, Jonah, and Peter. Amen? Because to a great degree, all of the men that I have mentioned here were men who is some of some form or fashion that got a second chance from our Savior, Jesus Christ. Isn't that amazing, Lord? Isn't that amazing, folks? Amen? I pray that you enjoyed this series. Amen. The Hope for the Downcast Soul by Senior Pastor Dr. Dina Bravan. Those of you has, who has not received Sunday's message, please go back and get it. And if you would like the script again for Sunday and today's script, go to our websites and go get it. If not, write in to Deacon Matthew Helmich or to Pastor Dina Bravan. Amen. Um, and 
we will find our ways in order to send it to you, to email it to you. Amen. You could even try, um, you could even try our, our prayer coordinator, Rosemary. Amen. Let her know that you would like a copy of the message. You can even find us right now on YouTube. Amen. I am so excited about that. Uh, the radio station that I've been uh, speaking on, they've been spreading it to different places. And one day I was going across YouTube and I found most of my messages right there on YouTube. Amen. So Jesus is Lord Fellowship Worldwide International is finally opening up more doors. Amen. This ministry is finally opening up more doors to where the Lord is leading it to. And I am so excited about it. Amen. Um, folks, through the grace of God, I wanted to share with you. May the Lord richly bless you. May the Lord richly guide you. May the Lord's hands be blessed upon you. Amen. And give you peace and give you strength. Give you hope, health, and healing. Amen. Hope, health, and healing in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen, folks. Um, please contact us at Jesus is Lord Fellowship Worldwide International, P.O. Box 2752, Inverness, Florida, 34452. Please also send in uh, donations or your tithe and offerings to also to the same address to Dr. Diana Brevon, P.O. Box 2752 Inverness, Florida. Please send in also your letters of encouragement. If you have any letters of encouragement that is written, we use them fervently because we send out packages to the jails. We send them out to the children's home. Amen. We send them to various places, to hospitals. Amen. So ask the Holy Spirit if you have that gift of writing letters of encouragement. Ask the Holy Spirit to lead your heart to be his ready writer throughout this ministry and, and write down a few of letters of encouragement and send them in because it will be reused when the Lord leads me to, to send it out. And uh, we are seeking more and more and more of prayer warriors, amen, through the grace of God. Do you have any prayer requests? Or celebration of praise we celebrate with you the praise of what the Lord has done with you when, when the Lord answers your prayer we also pray for you continually even after the Lord answers your prayers we continue to pray for you to years to come even when we don't hear from you you are continually in prayer amen my name is Senior Pastora Dr. Diana Brevon of Jesus is Lord Fellowship Worldwide International Folks, today is midweek service. This Sunday is the, is the first week of the month and also day one of the month of my birthday month. Your very own Senior Pastora, Dr. Diana Bravon's birthday is July 22nd. For those who would like to send in cards and, and, and what, whatever the Lord leads you to send me in, like you always do every year, I get so much abundance of surprises from you. God bless you all. You guys are a blessing. Amen. And I praise God that you are members of this ministry worldwide, no matter what websites that you belong to. Amen. You are a part of this ministry, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Yahoo, whether it's Brave Host. Through the grace of God, you are a blessing upon blessings to this ministry. Amen. And um, and my prayer coordinator, Rosemary, Deacon Matthew, and I, we are all blessed to have you. Amen. Be a part of it. But I pray that you continue to be more stronger in the living word today more than any other day passed away. Amen. We also offer daily your 30 you, you know, your whole month of the book of, of Proverbs. Today is Proverbs 27. Why, Pastora, do you ask? Because today is day 27. There's also 150 Psalms. How, how many books are in the book of Psalms? Five. We went over this on the first part of this sermon. 
Amen. On sermon number one on Sunday. Amen. Uh, I wanted to say, may the Lord richly bless you, guide you. I look forward for hearing from you. I look forward for even receiving your Bible studies. Amen. And I look forward for signing your certification in your GPA, credits degree, grade sheets. Amen. God bless you. My name is Senior Pastora, Dr. Diana Brevon, where Jesus is Lord.